So we're back in the electrical workshop. I'm back here with Marcus. And what are we up to yeah. today, Marcus? So today we're going to look at the techniques of putting a 90 degree bend in this 50 by 50 steel trunking. Naturally on site, people are going to use the prefab bends. However, we're going to incorporate the 90 degree bend into one length of steel trunking gas. The requirement for this is because when we're looking at the 5357 City and Guild, one yep. of their assessment pieces done at the end of their practical assessments is a piece of trunking with a yep. solid, not a pre-manufactured 90 degree bend. So this yep. is our practice job leading into that. We're going to be using the technique laid down in this book. This book is fantastic. Our apprentices it have is, all got yeah. this. It is. So it's the 5357 City and Guild's apprenticeship and we're working towards a 90 degrees out of one solid yep. piece. What's the distance we're expecting this to be from here to here, Marcus? So from here to here, they're going to have to perform at a distance of 450 millimetres. Good. And we're not concerned about this length? No, because we're going to cut that back afterwards. Okay. So let's see some of the kit that we're going to use in this exercise before we start to attempt yeah. to make this 90 degree <laughs> bend. So Marcus, I can see you've got out some of the kit that we're going to use in order to produce yep. this flat 90 degree bend. Do you want to just highlight some of the stuff that's in front of you there for me? Yeah, of course. So we'll start with the Tresham toolbox, which we know incorporates the 10 tools we use for most of our videos. We've got our PPE, gloves, goggles, etc. A battery drill. We've got our learning guide, which incorporates the technique we're going to show you on this video. We've got a center punch a marker pen and a scribe. We've got both of them because for the video purposes, we're probably gonna use a marker pen so you can see where we've drew our, our cutting lines, etc. Some high speed steel drill bits. We've got a rough file for getting rid of the burrs, <coughs> an engineer's square, a block of wood, which will come in very handy when we're putting our steel trunking into a vise to make sure we don't put any bends in it, etc. And a hacksaw for cutting. Okay, so we've got a pre-cut 50 by 50 mil steel trunking. We're using our 5357 City and Guilds book, and we're on page 277 using the technique laid down here. We've got some measurements to take and some crucial ones, and we're gonna mark them out on the trunking before we take it to a vice in order that we can start doing some cutting. First of all, we have to get measurement A, Marcus. Yep. A is a real crucial line. What distance is that gonna be? So that's what we talked about previously in the video of the 450 millimetres. So we're going to measure from one end and we're going to come down and we're going to mark all the way round our trunking at that crucial measurement for us because that's the back of the bend. That's yes, the end it is, yeah. to back of bend, yeah. 450 mil. Yeah. Let's do that next. So measured my 450 mil down. It requires this mark to go all the way round the trunking. I'm going to use my uh, sharpie pen so hopefully we can see it so we're going to make one line like so I'm going to bring that line round make a second line and then round again to make a third line okay so we've now got a line going all the way around which is 450 mil from the end to the line and that's going to be our A mark so if I put A on this side, so we know what that one is, that's positioned A on our actual piece of trunk. And it's difficult to see on camera, but as you're working through this um, with the video presentations, you cut it. And obviously the book as well, hopefully it will come a little bit easier too. So that's point A here, marked all the way around. So Marcus, what I've got to do now is work out, now I've gone all the way around at 450, yep. I've got to work out whether I'm gonna be sending my trunking to the right or sending my trunking to the left in order that I position the next couple of marks. So which yep. way are we going to do it, Marcus? So the way the job falls on our boards, we're going to have to position our bend to the left. So we're coming this side, yes? Yes, so therefore, unlike the drawing, if you look at the drawing in the book, by performing the cut states here, we will actually pull the bend to the right. Okay. So we're going to have to put our marks B and C on the side you've got shown there. So we're working on this side, because we're gonna be bending it this way, we're gonna be working with the next two measurements, both B and C on this side of the trunking. Yes. Yeah. Okay, again, working with the book, hopefully this will be a little bit easier. So I've got a little bit of pre-cut 50 by 50 mil trunking, which I'm going to use. I'm gonna position in it, so the line A is just here. Yeah. Okay, position it here and make a mark onto the other side. So put a mark straight down there. And then do exactly the same coming this way. Position it against line A, and position another line down there. Okay, so that's the side we're working on. Yep. I've now got center line A, and it's a little bit difficult to see. I've got a top line and a bottom line, which we're going to label those as B and C. Yep. Is that the right way around? Are we gonna call them B and C, or do you wanna call them C and B? Which way around would you like to go, Marcus? I'd like to go C and B. So C at the top, yep. and B at the bottom. Okay, yep. so this will be line C for us, and this will be line B. 
Okay, and they're crucial as we move to the next stage. Yeah. Okay, let's confirm these marks then. So from the end of the trunk in this way, this was the 450 down to mark A. Yeah, that's correct. And then we've got approximately a width of a trunking here, being approximately 50 mil gap here. And yep. it is best to use a piece of trunking because I've done this a couple of times where I've measured just 50 mil and found it quite difficult. So I've used the width of a trunking and then a width of a trunking this way. So what we yep. ended up doing was positioning our trunking on like so and our trunking on like so in order to get these other marks. They're always going to be in roughly the right position. They're not dead straight at the moment, etc. But it does work better this way than using, say, just a 50 mil gap and a set square. So we're ready now to think about cutting the trunk in, and we're going to be cutting line A first. So this is the side of which we're going to be turning the trunk in against. And we're going to cut all the way down the line A on this side and all the way along the line on the back. The line here on its own on this side will not be cut, otherwise we'll end up with two pieces of trunking and that's not the idea. So we will not be cutting this one, we'll just be working down line A and on the back side of a cut here with our senior hacksaw. Let's take it over to the vice in order to make that cut. So Marcus, why am I going to use a block of wood with my 50 by 50 mil trunking? So Gaz, you're going to insert that into the trunking itself. So when we go into our square jawed vice, we're not going to cause any dents in our trunking. Okay, good. So I've positioned it, so my line A here, which I'm gonna cut, and I'm gonna cut down the back side as well, so I'm gonna do my two cuts. I've positioned my block wood fairly close to there in order to increase the jaws of the vise and hold the trunking nice and steady. So if I position that into the actual vise itself, nice and close. So I'm actually squeezing the block of wood now, and I'm not squeezing the metal work of the trunking. There's a concern if I squeeze the trunking, what could happen, Marcus? That it could cause dents in the trunking. Okay, let's get ready to cut it next. At this stage, folks, when I go to cut the trunk in, I may speed it up or I may put an overlay of music on. I know not everyone's happy when I put music on. It's going to sound quite terrible with me just cutting away at this actual uh, metal work with the hacksaw. So I'm going to take my senior hacksaw, I'm going to cut down this line, okay, and then I'm going to roll it over and I'm going to cut the next line. Okay then, so I've now got my, my gloves and my goggles on. It may be that you'll be wearing ear defenders in the workshop for a lot of people are cutting the trunk in at the same time. And then we're gonna cut down line A, rotate my trunk in round and then cut the back side as well. Senior hacksaw is being used. We've got a minimum of 24 TPI, so 24 teeth per inch. Preferably it would be 32. And we're using bimetal blades. Again, preferably be high speed steel. Remember we're a poor old college. Let's do that cut next. Cut down the back side, remember not to cut the other wall out as we'll end up having two pieces of trunk in and we're ready to look at what the next stage is. So we've brought the trunking back over to where the exercise book is, Marcus, because I need to know what the next stage is. I've cut my line A down the side and back, but what's the yeah. next stage, please? So now you've cut your line A down the side and back and leaving one wall intact. What you're going to do now is you're going to cut down line B only on this wall that's showing. This one here? Yeah, and then we're going to file the back edge down to weaken it, and then we can 
break the flap off. So we're going to be taking this section completely out by cutting just down line B yeah. and then filing this back section here Yeah. and then taking this wall out. Let's do that next. So we're ready just to cut down line B. So I'm going to cut that one exactly the same as I cut the top side on A, but we're not going any further. We're just going to stop on this one side. Now I need to file this back edge. I'm just going to move it out and I'm going to file this back edge before trying to break this off with either a pair of pliers or adjustable grips. So I've repositioned my trunk in, in the vise and I'm ready now to file this back edge out. So now I'm going to attempt to break off this section using a pair of pliers, a couple of gentle wiggles. And we've removed the section between line A and B. We're ready for the next stage. So we've returned over to our textbook here, Marcus. What's the next stage I've got to do? So the next stage we're moving on to, Gaz, is we're gonna remove the return lip between C and A using the technique with the hacksaw and the file that oh. we've seen previously. So the one we used here, when we took this one, I'm gonna fold the back edge yeah. here, we're gonna do a similar thing here. We're gonna fold this back edge. Yeah, we are, yeah. And we're gonna snap out the returning lip here on the trunk here. We are, yeah. I think because that's quite a long one and not a lot of material to grab hold of, what I generally do is I do it in two sections. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take my Sharpie pen, I'm going to just make a rough mark halfway between the two. So I'm going to cut it a little bit through the lip there. I'm going to file that section and that section. Obviously, I'm going to need to cut here on the C line and remove that actually in two parts just to make it a little bit easier for me. So we're ready to make a couple of cuts. So we're going to cut down this line here that I've added in extra and the one at point C just through the lip itself. We can use a senior or a junior hacksaw to do it before we then we file this back edge and we're going to snap it out in two sections. I think that's the easiest way in which to do it. done and now I'm just going to file this back edge and then I'm going to attempt to snap it out. It's always easier to snap out this one here, it's got more material under it, this one here, this wall here is always more difficult to remove. I've had a go file in it, take my pliers, this one's almost more difficult, just take a little bit more care with this one. And there we go, we we're ready, we haven't done any deburring yet, we'll do that in the future, but we've made another removal of the lip ready for the next stage. Okay then Marcus, what's the next stage for me? So. After we've completed that last stage, we're now going to cut more of the return lip but on the other side from A towards B. So as I turn it over, we've yep. got the A line here on the back side, the one we didn't cut, and we're going to move it down towards B, is that correct? So yeah, I'm around 10 mil. Okay, so I'm just going to take a little bit of this return lip out, about 10 mil. I think in experience is, I think I've been nearer 7 or 8 mil than 10, okay, so yeah. I'm going to take yeah. slightly less than 10. So let's mark that up next and let's cut that one. 
So I've marked out on my trunking. So this line here was the A line on the back here. So this first one, this side. And then the second line is towards the B marks. This is the B section, which we removed. And we've come down with a gap of about seven or eight millimeters. The book says 10. I've gone for slightly less than that. I'm gonna run my hacksaw through both lips and then file the back out and just snap out that very small section next. I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to file that edge out on the next stage. So exactly the same as before, I'm going to file this edge out. I'm going to use a slightly smaller file now in order to get in there and file this back edge out. Just so I can get in with it, I'm going to use a pair of side cutters. And hopefully I'm going to snap that one out with ease. And that's the next one. Remember, no deburring has gone on yet. We're going to deburr it all in one go. So let's move it back to the bench and see where we are next. Okay, Marcus, so we're getting there. So what's the next stage? Okay, so moving on, we're going to make another cut from A to C, but this time it's going to be at the bottom and on the inside. So we're going to be cutting <coughs> the inner edge here. Is that what we're going from A here down yep, to C? Correct, yeah. So if I roll this over, I'm going to need, and if I put a line in for it, I'm going to need to cut this inner edge just here. Okay, hopefully the black pen will help make it easier for you to see. So I've got an edge down here. I'm going to be cutting that from there to there, from A to C. Okay, so let's take that yep. back over to the bench, over to the voice and cut that. So we can clearly see now the cut that we've just done here. We've inserted the trunking upright into our voice, and I'm going to attempt to trunk it my body out of the way while I run the hacksaw down the internal line here. I think it's easier just to fold it slightly out of the way. So I'm gonna push this side over. I don't wanna push it over too far because obviously I'll crease this back side and I don't want to do that. So I'm just gonna push it a little bit out of the way. Okay, that will allow hopefully the hacksaw to run easier in that position there. The difficulty is me obviously trying to cut that line and stay out of the way of the camera. I'll attempt to do that, but the idea is that I'm gonna cut down the internal line here at the next stage. Okay, Marcus, we're back over at the voice and bench. What's next? Yeah, so you agree we've done all the cutting now, Gaz? Oh, I hope so. Yeah. So now we're going to go around and deburr all of the edges we've cut into. Okay. Also, while we're deburring, we're going to round off that top edge. This one here, yeah. Yeah, from the cut we made earlier. And we're also going to lower the top side of that slightly down as well. Okay, so we're going to have to lower this edge down because this section here has got to fit inside this section here when we actually make the fold. So that's yep. going to need lowering. It could be a case of filing that down or even making a very small cut from top to bottom, just taking off a couple of three mil. But we're going to lower that edge, round this edge, and I'm going to deburr everywhere that I've cut. Is there any concerns yep. about these areas that have been cut or filed at? Yeah, so obviously, during the cutting and filing process we've already done, we've actually damaged the surface, okay. removing the zinc coating. Okay. So we're gonna to need to reapply that with maybe a galvanized spray or paint. Okay, so the only reason we won't be doing that at college, I don't expect us to do it in the industry, remember this is for our apprentices, we expect these to be repainted to prevent corrosion. The reason we're not doing it here, we've got some real big issues with the cost assessments required by yeah. using sprays and paints actually in the electrical workshop. So I'm gonna do this um, semi on camera, semi off, semi off camera. I'm gonna deburr and round those corners off as you require.
Okay, so hopefully I've deburred it up enough. Hopefully I've lowered this edge down with the file enough and we're ready now to effectively put this section into here as we fold it into our 90 degree position. So if I just pull that back in slightly and then we're gonna look at folding them together like so. And then we're gonna actually just fold that round this corner. So we can already see that we've got it into a, a 90 degree position, okay? And we're just gonna fold that piece of metal on the inside in order to get our 90. So we're, we're nearly there, okay? So just a little bit more work off camera and then we're ready to bolt it up. So I just pulled that round, I've folded in here. So we've got a nice rounded internal edge there. We've got the back section here ready to be bolted. We're gonna do that as well. So we're gonna bolt it up through the back section and through the top section. Okay, and then we can see that we've set our 90 degree position. So it just requires us to drill a few holes now with our high speed steel drill bits and put a couple of nuts and bolts in in order to complete that 90. So we're nearly there, Marcus. So what's the next stage for me, please? So before we continue to the next stage, Gaz, can you just confirm that the top to the back edge is actually 450? Okay, so I'm at the top and we can see clearly that that's, I think that's within the region of 450 millimetres. You happy with that? Yeah, I am, yeah. What's the next stage? Next we're gonna, well, I need you to set it to 90 degrees, please. Okay, so I take the combination square and I run it along the two edges. Okay, to confirm it's 90, I can reverse the process obviously here and again to confirm that's 90 because what we're going to do next is we're going to bolt it together so where we've got the two pieces of metal crossing over so just in here and just in here we want to make sure that we put at least one six mil nut and bolt through there in order to secure it at 90 degrees so i'll flip it over i can make a mark somewhere there of where we're going to be drilling it and then we've got to look to find out where the other one is so the other one's here so again i'm going to be somewhere here in order that we can drill through. We're gonna use a block of wood again. I'm not bothered now that when I start drilling that I drill through the metal work. So in other words, I'm gonna come through from this side and drill through the metal work. I don't mind if I drill straight into the piece of wood as well, it will help secure it into position. So we'll take those over to the vise and we'll drill those holes out and then we'll just tighten those nuts and bolts up at 90 degrees. So we've got a mark here, we're gonna do the same. We've got a couple of blocks of wood. So if I turn it around just to show you, we've got a couple of blocks of woods ready to be in position. Remember, and I'm not bothered if I drill through the wood as well as the metal work itself. Okay, and I'm going to dot punch and then drill a three followed by a six mil hole here and I'm gonna repeat the process over here. I'm gonna put the nuts and bolts in, I'm gonna put them both in the same one, cut them down to the right length so I can use them in both different positions. So let's just quickly do that and then we'll be finished. So take our dot punch, give it a one strike. Three mil high speed steel. You see I went through into the wood as well, which is not a problem. That's a six and a half mil. Okay, we're gonna repeat the process for the other side and then we'll look at doing the nuts and bolts. Block of wood's been moved. I haven't got it fully under this time, but the block of wood's in position. It was holding two pieces of metal together. So both of them are wedged by the block of wood here. And I've already dot punched it out. So it's just a case of the three and the six mil. And we're ready for the nuts and bolts. So Gaz, what have you done here? So what I've done is I've used my six mil nuts and bolts and I've currently got them poking out of the trunking. And they look quite nasty. The reason I've done that and I've tightened them up, so I've put them through and tightened them up using my 10 mil spanner and large flat headed screwdriver is what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cut these both off and actually turn them around the other way. So then we have just the actual head of the bolt on the outside, so okay, in both cases and the head of the nut on the inside. So we're gonna turn the positions around. So I'll cut those off next. Well, Marcus, I think we set out to make a flat 90 degree bend. I've turned the bolts around. So we've now got the head of the bolt here and the actual nut on the inside in both cases. Yep. So we can actually lay it then obviously semi-flat onto the surface that we're working on. And I think I've set that to 90 degrees in one piece. Yep. We're not gonna fit any of the end caps or the lid in this video presentation. We may revisit those in a later presentation. So I think that's the trunk in made. Well, Marcus, that's taken almost half a day to yeah. produce the video, hopefully, well, about three people have got to the end yeah. of, yeah. but we'd like to say at this stage that we've managed to produce 
the 90 degree piece that we expected on a yeah, flat 90. Yeah. yeah, we have, yeah. The reason we're a little bit longer here, what do we always ask our students to do with that length of the trunk before we start? So we ask them to cut off 50 mil to get them used to cutting the trunking in the first place. So Be Before we actually fabricate yeah, the 90 yeah. itself. We may go on, we may not, we don't know. We might leave it as a, a challenge for our learners yeah. in order to do the lid. There is some other videos out there of us putting turnbuckle clips in, end caps, etc. Yeah, there is, yeah. So in this video presentation, we made a flat 90 degree, which we believe you need for the 535 